This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. That will be about designing a horizontal flow constructed wetland to treat wastewater. This is considered a nature-based solution, so this is a very sustainable way or technique to treat domestic sewage. The components of a constructed wetland are very simple, so what you need is basically gravel, so what you are seeing here is gravel, and reeds, so these plants, and some uh, mechanical or basic mechanical components like uh, a pipe, for example. And the wastewater will flow. So since we are dealing or we are covering in this uh, lecture a horizontal flow constructed wetland, so the flow will enter horizontally through a perforated pipe. So we have a perforated pipe that is placed under this layer of gravel this is basically a coarse gravel layer so we have a perforated pipe that will disperse the wastewater flow and this flow will enter the wetland and will flow through this media this gravel media that has a depth of around 40 to 50 centimeters and this wastewater will undergo some treatment we will cover later on what are the treatment processes and then the wastewater will exit this wetland also through a perforated pipe that will collect this wastewater then you can uh, reuse maybe this uh, water for irrigation or, or you can uh, further treat this water uh, using a, a tertiary treatment process for disinfection uh, such as uh, chlorination or UV disinfection and uh, you can uh, dispose this water safely. This depends on the regulations uh, of the country you are treating the wastewater in. Now let's see a typical uh, wetland scheme. So what we are seeing here is a household and this household is generating uh, domestic wastewater. So this wastewater will flow into a primary treatment tank, which is in this case a septic tank. For bigger scale project, uh, you can use an uh, ABR system and for uh, larger scale projects, you can maybe use a big sedimentation tank. It is very important uh, to consider a very well designed primary treatment because the constructed wetland, the following process, which is a secondary treatment process, requires a very low uh, total suspended solids and very low FOG or uh, fat, oil and grease. Why? Because these two components can clog easily the wetland. So if we are unable uh, to lower these two components, or parameters that are the TSS and the FOG, we might face some uh, very hard problems of uh, clogging and uh, wetland flooding. Then the uh, wastewater, as I have uh, previously said, can be further treated or disposed. Now, what are the wetland structural components? As I have said, a wetland is a very simple process. So what we need is an excavated basin. So we need uh, to excavate a basin that is uh, sloped uh, at the bottom. So this, this is the soil, let's say. So we need a, to excavate uh, a basin and we need to place an impermeable lining material. So we have to place here a, a lining material. So we have to place a geotextile and an HTPE membrane. And this uh, uh, impermeable lining material will prevent the leakage of wastewater or the infiltration within the groundwater. So we will prevent the infiltration of this uh, contaminated, still untreated wastewater uh, into the ground and uh, it might reach 
the uh, groundwater if uh, we have a uh, groundwater under our wetland. Then we need to place gravel media. We have uh, two types of uh, media within our constructed wetland. We have for the first part and for the last part, we have to place coarse gravel, so big gravel that will protect the inlet and the outlet pipes. Within the uh, uh, treatment area or within the wetland, we have to place smaller or fine gravels, so smaller size uh, gravels, and then we will plant our reeds within this area. So we have here the plants, the reeds, and of course we have the inlet and the outlet structures. So the inlet pipe that is placed at the top and uh, the uh, outlet pipe placed at the bottom. The inlet pipe will disperse the wastewater and the outlet pipe will collect the treated wastewater. And of course we need an adjustable water level control device that is placed uh, somewhere at uh, the end of the wetland to control the water level of the uh, wetland so we can avoid flooding and to control the level of the water to the desired depth. Now let's see how this system works. Now, first of all, as I have said, we have this uh, inlet pipe at the top uh, of our wetland at the, the inlet part, and it is covered by some gravel, uh, some coarse gravel, and we have the water that is being dispersed into the wetland. The treatment process is within this area. It is within this root and gravel area that will form a media that is ideal for the growth of bacteria. So we have the growth of these good bacteria that will contribute in the removal of pollutants. So these bacteria will, like between uh, brackets, they will eat the pollutants, they will eat the organic matters uh, in our uh, wastewater, and they will clean this wastewater. We have attached and suspended microbial growth. So these bacteria are attached and suspended microbial growth. And these are responsible for the removal of soluble organic compounds that will be degraded aerobically and anaerobically. So when we say aerobically, it means with the presence of oxygen and anaerobically without the presence of oxygen. For the aerobic process, the oxygen is supplied from the diffusion or leakage within the vegetation roots. So within these roots of the uh, plants or of the reeds, we have the diffusion of some oxy oxygen that will help in the proliferation of these good bacteria or this good microbial growth. As you can see also at the end of this treatment uh, process, we have the collection pipe here and we have this water level control uh, device. We will see this uh, device in details later on, but notice that this uh, level, the water level within the wetland is controlled by this item. Now let's see the advantages of the constructed wetland. So first of all, it is a nature-based solution. So it is a very sustainable solution. No need for heavy electromechanical components, no need for electricity. It is simple and low cost, especially if the land where you are uh, building or constructing this wetland is low cost. If the price of the land is high, then in a wetland, would not really be feasible. So uh, since the wetland will take a large area, you have mainly to consider uh, the cost of uh, the land before deciding or considering a constructed wetland. Also, a wetland will provide a wildlife habitat, no need for blowers, so no need uh, to inject uh, oxygen. The operation is by gravity, so also no need for uh, heavy pumps. 
No unpleasant sounds and smells, of course, if the wetland is well designed and it requires minimal maintenance, some gardening works regarding the uh, reeds. The disadvantages, it requires a large area compared to other systems. The risk of insects and rodents and also it can cause some significant land pressure. Now let's see a performance of a primary treatment plus a secondary treatment that involves a wetland. So if we consider a primary treatment that might be a septic tank or an ABR plus a, a wetland, we can expect a very high quality effluent. So the BOD removal rate can reach 80 to 90%. We have 90% removal of TSS. 10 to 20% phosphorus removal, 30 to 50% total nitrogen removal, and we have a very high reduction of E. coli that can reach 99%. As I have already said, it is very important to design a, an efficient primary treatment. The wetlands can be easily clogged, and this can cause flooding. To avoid this problem, we have to reduce the suspended solids or the TSS and the FOG, the fat, oil and grease in the primary treatment. The ABR is preferred over the septic tank for its ability to highly reduce the TSS and the FOG. To be able to size the horizontal flow wetland, you can use a simple rule of thumb. So we can consider that for each one person or for each capita, we need five square meter of horizontal flow constructed wetland. For example, a wetland for 10 persons will have an area of 50 square meter. So 10 times five, we need a wetland of 50 square meter. To be able to construct this wetland, you need to consider these design parameters, the lens to which ratio is between one to two, you can take it as 1.5. The minimum length of the wetland is six. The depth is around 40 centimeters. The water level must be maintained five centimeters below the surface and always consider a slope. So the wetland must be uh, sloped. So this is the slope, I am exaggerating a bit. So always a slope, this part, to enable gravity flow through the treatment system. Also, placing liner and edges is very important to protect the groundwater and also to maintain sufficient water for plant growth. So as I have already said, we need to place a geotextile layer, then we need to place an HDPE a membrane or you can use uh, other uh, material PVC polyethylene or polypropylene and it must cover the whole area starting from the top and covering the whole area now let's see here an example of a horizontal flow uh, wetland for six persons so this is a top view as you can see here the width of this wetland is 4.1 meters and the length is 6.8 meters. This is the inlet structure. It is a perforated pipe. We have also a slotted plastic arc vault with a capped 150 millimeters diameter inspection risers at the two sides. So we can expect the inlet structure. We have also here coarse gravel that cover one to 1.5 uh, meters of width. Then we have the fine washed uh, gravel uh, and we have some reeds planted in this area. And finally, coarse gravel at the end of the wetland with a perforated collection pipe that will collect the treated wastewater. And as you can see here, we have placed a water level control device to control the water depth. 
Now let's see a longitudinal view. As you can see, the depth of this uh, wetland is 40 centimeters. The inlet pipe is sloped and it is placed at the top of the wetland. And you can see here the uh, outlet pipe or the collection pipe that will collect the treated wastewater. And we have here the water level control device to control the water depth. And also always keep in mind that the water level must be 5 cm below the gravel surface. So 5 cm below this top surface. Now for the vegetation or for the reeds, you can choose any native reed that has the following criteria. It must have a deep and wide roots with strong rhizomes. It must be able to grow in the wet and nutrient rich environment. And it must be efficient with the transport of oxygen into root zone to facilitate oxidation of reduced toxic metals. The most commonly used reeds are the Phragmites carca and the Phragmites australis because they are the most productive. They can form horizontal rhizomes that can penetrate the entire filter depth. They have a high climatic tolerance and they have a rapid growth rate. For the inlet pipe, as you can see in this picture, it must be perforated and the perforations uh, must have a diameter of 20 millimeters and the diameter of the pipe is 100 millimeters and it is placed under this coarse gravel layer. For the outlet pipe also it has a diameter of uh, 100 millimeters perforated but this time with holes of six millimeters as you can see here the perforations that have a diameter of six millimeters now for the water uh, level control devices so you can use uh, this type of water uh, control that is a very basic one so the uh, flow will enter into a pipe and this pipe could be a telescopic pipe with adjustable height so as you can see this pipe is opened at the top and you can adjust the water level accordingly or you can just buy a, a water level a control system that has a, a flow control mechanism or so you can increase or decrease uh, this let's say wall uh, to reach the desired depth of water the maintenance of a wetland is very simple you mainly need some gardening uh, works and inspections so you have to uh, inspect for weeds and remove them check also the plant health and uh, pest uh, problems you can do this like every 15 days or one month also uh, inspect the inlet pipe and check that uh, you have an uniform flow and identify blockages and damages the same uh, can be done for the outlet pipe also you can do this every 15 days from time to time check the water effluent quality so you have to do a water lab analysis yearly harvest the vegetation and replant the reeds if necessary and also yearly check the sludge levels in the primary treatment and the sludge as necessary to maintain the treatment performance and avoid large drift into the wetland. Thank you for listening and please don't forget to like and subscribe.